this is an article featured from Hypebeast that I feel like touches on what I mentioned earlier in another podcast regarding influence of marketing changing. Does report on business of fashion where essentially they were saying that a lot of influencer marketing agencies are now pitching influencers that have jobs instead of just influencers who just, you know, exist to take pictures for looking around in central London and just trying to get as much free stuff as possible. Now, I guess if you're a brand, if you're a product, if you're a service, if you're a platform, if you're a store, whatever it is that you need an influencer for, you need more bang for your buck. You actually need to see demonstrable and black and white numbers as to how many people this influencer brought to your site. This influencer made you know purchase your item product or service whatever it may be so i get why now there's been a shift in terms of criteria now they're looking for influencers that have day jobs who most likely those kind of influencers are the ones who legitimately buy things they're the ones who go and spend money and to review things they don't get sent anything ahead of time and that gives them a far stronger connection with their audience and their audience also trusts them because they know they're buying most of the things that they're reviewing and it's not something that's being sent to them um, by a brand as a part of a PR promotion. So that would make a lot of sense for me. But I also think in general, the whole reason why we're in this place at the moment is because of the economy. But I also feel like in general, influencers essentially messed up the entire industry by just taking any and everything that came across their way. And I think this is a good example courtesy of Hypebeast and it features one of the guys who used to be on that YouTube show called Pack. I'm not too sure if it's still running at the moment. I used to see it all the time on my feed, never clicked it or watched a full video because it looked lame and something that I would never really be into. But overall, I do know that the guys on the show had a very big influence on i guess you'd call it men's would you i was called streetwear whatever it is. is it men's fashion was it streetwear whatever it is maybe it's like hipster wear where you you know you put all these kind of wacky clothes on you go for themes it's kind of like a male version of peacock and it feels like right it feels like a male version of a bad b that you see on instagram right they all kind of want to look a little bit hot they all kind of want to look a little bit cool and that's what they kind of go for and i think the show's premise was that they'd had these guys who are li- who are kind of maybe the same age, let's say they're under 25 and they'd kind of do these challenges about, you know, finding an outfit in a vintage store for a certain amount, maybe styling a friend to look a certain way, maybe having a challenge where they make something, that kind of thing. But the whole premise around it was to do with clothes. And one of the guys that was featured in it was this guy here called Danny Lomas. I just know his face. I don't really know his name or any sort of details about him personally. So if I do say some things out here, I'll turn. Please forgive me. I'm just talking from the seat of my pants, as you can clearly see. But this is a feature courtesy of Hypebeast and it's a paid advertisement. So, you know, it's maybe not the best example of this sort of stuff, but I thought I'd mention it anyway. And it's a Danny Lomas and Lauro Piana for Hypebeast Soulmates from the Yorkshire's Roots so from his Yorkshire roots to the fantasy of a sun-soaked Riviera, this is how Laura Piana's white soul is with Lomas every step of the way. Incredibly cringe because if I'm not mistaken, this hypebeast soulmates thing is something that they do in-house where they effectively feature creatives and notable people within the streetwear universe who have a particular relationship to shoes or whatever it may be, hence the term soulmates. And they talk about them and they give their rundown on them. And I guess Laura, Laura Piana, um, who are known for their walls and stuff, I'm pretty sure the same people, right? They make that kind of thing um they are now deciding to branch out into footwear maybe they did it prior i'm not really too sure and they decided a good way to do it was to piggyback off that hype beast souls feature and make that um a piece that kind of ties in together with what they got but obviously it's a paid advertisement as you can see here presented by laura piana now me no, me personally i think the shoes look absolutely horrible they remind me of that kind of era in the 2000s when a lot of brands were making loafers with like sneaker soles i remember when i went at nike there was a particular sneaker that they had there was like a dress shoe with a nike rejuvenate sole underneath it really horrendous horrible stuff i don't know who was wearing that stuff i know i didn't there's no way i'm wearing a lace-up boot with a sneaker sole on it it's not happening it's either i wear a proper shoe or wear a proper sneaker none of this kind of hybrid shoe sneaker smart casual nonsense going on in my 
game. But forget that in terms of just what I think and how they look crap. I just don't think these are anything that this guy would wear or buy in his own right. Maybe this outfit tells you one thing, but I don't think he'd go out there and see these Laura Piano loafers that are made of, is that cordray? I don't know what it is, um, with the white sole and think that they look hard. I don't think they do. And I think in general, this is what ruined influencer marketing because this is for sure a project where Laura Piano reached out to him because he has clout, because he has influence, because he has followers, because he was a notable person on the show and wanted to work together on a project. And then him, of course, probably saw the numbers and maybe saw some some other things in terms of creatively maybe be able to choose the colors and the soul and the finishes whatever it may be they kind of thought it would be a good marriage but the the problem is that if i can suss this out that this isn't something danny lomas will be wearing day to day and it's clearly a cash grab then i'm pretty sure his own fans can suss it out also because the shoes for me are legitimately garbaggio like straight in a bin horrendous burn them instantly type of shoes the article from hype is as follows from trading wall in the early 1800s the founding Loro Piana & Co in 1924 under the helm of Pietro Loro Piana the northern Italian brand established itself as a pinnacle of luxury um, earning a reputation for sourcing some of the royal finest materials in the world and using them to create masterpieces of understated elegance <laughs> this is definitely a brand piece because it's the best written thing you've ever seen a hype piece as a brand notes its selection is a global affair cashmere and baby cashmere from goats in Mongolia and inner Mongolia Vicuna from the Andes and extra fine merino wool from the Australia and New Zealand and lotus flower fiber from Myanmar. Couple this with the minimal branding and the clientele discerning as the brand itself, discerning Laura Piana customers. Fuck off. Come on, man. Laura Piana is basically an Italian Brooks Brothers, isn't it? And it's talking about discernible flipping customers. You, need, you guys need to relax. Um, couple this with the minimal branding, discernible. Um, so in clientele is discerning as a brand itself you've got a house renowned for offering only the most superlative quality um likewise this week's soulmates participant also prides itself on enjoying the final things in life yeah right dude this guy's 25 years old holy smokes bro either he smokes or drinks a lot or just he just got an old face because this guy's 25 Look, like, honestly white people age mad isn't it just the other day, I found out that flipping Julia Fox is 32. She's 32 years old, Julia Fox. She looks like she's 40. Like, if someone told me she was 40, I'd believe it. If someone told me she was a really fit um, Pilates instructor who happened to be 60, I'd believe it also. If you told me this guy was 45, I'd believe it. He looks like Jimmy Bullard, isn't it? Like, legitimately. How is this guy flipping 25? And again, forget the age, the, you know, mocking and whatnot. 25 and he's wearing these Laura Piana... Um, um, loafers really a cool guy like that that has a nice guitar i don't know if it's a gibson or whatever guitars people would use that want to be cool have you know living in a great little flat somewhere in london with high ceilings and shit and nice wood floors do you really think someone as cool looking as that is really a fan of these flipping loafers that's the issue with influencer marketing influencers are too willing and happy to take things just because someone's paying them but then it diminishes and it hurts their brand and people stop believing and trusting them for their recommendations because they just think everything's a flipping shield and everything's a cash grab it continues Danny Lomas is 25 from the sleepy English market town of Derryfield in Yorkshire. I don't even know what the hell that is. He doesn't scream Monaco yacht parties, the Riviera. Sorry, it doesn't scream Monaco yacht parties, the Riviera, Mediterranean tans and an espresso. Nor does Lomas uh, current home in Shoreditch, East London. I thought he'd say, that, like, has he never had an espresso because he's from flipping um, Yorkshire? What? Um, but through the power of fashion coming up through the pack uh, YouTube channel before launching his own podcast and working with dozens of luxury labels. Bro, how can you be launching your own podcast channel have all these luxury labels and the first collab you do that maybe I've seen is flipping Laura Piana? Really? And especially on loafers. Maybe some clothing and stuff. Cool, but loafers. Lomas has become an undisputed king of if you know, if you know if you know, you know Lux. The <laughs> Think sharply tailored suits, plush knit, vintage watches working or not, and the overarching penchant for proper good clobber, particularly a pair of loafers or driving shoes. Man, this flipping editorial, this write up is absolutely vomit inducing. This is where Laura Piana comes in. He says, Laura Piana is unexpected and surprising, said Lomas over a pint in his beard local pub. Yeah, I'm sure. On his top, um, Laura Piana, baby cashmere. 
um, Haston mock neck in a bold flaxen yellow hue with his feet donning a pair of iconic low piano white sole shoes. <laughs> Honestly, I hope he got the bag. I'm assuming this jumper is part of the collection too, maybe that hat. I hope this kid got the bag. I'm not going to read the entire interview, but I'm going to play this clip and we can see it. But the shoes are absolutely garbage, man. Look at the nice crib he lives in. He lives in this great crib. He creates a podcast on this massive table. Like, do you know what I mean? There's a natural light coming through the windows. He's got a great little library in the background where he lives there. Like, living a good life. And you're flipping, wearing these white, these terrible white soled shoes, brother. Really? Oh, look, you've got the same mics as well. Like, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. This can't be life, man. Honestly. I hope you got the bag. I hope they backed up the bag and it's like hundreds of thousands. I really do hope so. But let's see the video and let's see how he's trying to sell this. This lifestyle, right? This this Laurel, <laughs> Laurel Piano lifestyle. Let's see what he's going for here. A good pair of shoes can turn an average outfit great, whereas a bad pair of shoes can turn a great outfit pretty bad. So treat yourself. Do yourself a favour. Hello, I'm Danny Lomas and welcome to my flat. As long as I can remember, I've just always... Flat wear. Enjoyed shoes and clothes. It's like a pair of loafers, nice like Harrington jacket. I can't believe this nigga's 25 years old, man. Holy shit. I should just be lying about my age, innit, nowadays. Do you think if I said I was 25, people would believe me? If I said, I'm, yeah, I'm 25, a creative in London, London-based creative, 25 years old, <laughs> trying to make my way in the scene, you know, making my way, you know, trying to make connections, trying to hang out with the cool people. Do you think everyone would believe me? Getting a good pair of stay fresh trousers or something like clothing obviously can give you confidence. Like if you look great, you feel great. The Throne Fits boys said it best. They said we're in a post sneaker world. So yeah, God, I must have about thirty pairs of those. I hate that. I hate that. That sounds like a dog whistle to me. Post sneaker world, return to tailoring. That for me is a trigger because everybody in Paris Fashion Week, the kind of the mecca for men's fashion and the mecca for a lot of the streetwear guys who go there and try and probably bang underage models i don't know i'm just throwing out stuff here and joking but that whole place was obviously inundated with streetwear guys with their chrome hearts tops on and jewelry and wearing their flipping expensive dunks and trainers so it probably uh, disturbed and frightened the aristocrats and the socialites over there and they hated it right these fashion people who would usually sit on the front row are now being you know flipping flung to the back in favor of some guy that's sitting there who owns some sort of flipping agency that's buying up all these brands and stocking them in stores all around the world and he smells like weed and he's covered in tattoos and all that kind of good stuff so i understand these guys saying hey let's start pushing this return to tailoring thing but for me it feels like a dog whistle because it wants to get black and brown faces out of that scene and if you tell me this is a post sneaker flipping world we're living in, I also feel like you want to get rid of the black and brown faces because who's legitimately wearing flipping GH Bass loafers every single day on a daily? Come on, man. You have to be someone of some level of privilege or you have to be somebody that's non, non black or brown for the most part. No real, you know, normal human being is flipping around the street wearing flipping, you know, slippery loafers every single day. It's a privilege that not a lot of us got, especially if you're toiling out there in the in construction fields you know what i mean you don't have that luxury so i'm holding the summer walk in the brown cord right it's the cool clean silhouette so it's shit. great <laughs> so shit come on come on danny man you're better than this brother man i haven't watched the show i don't know much about you but from i remember clips seeing online and how you carry yourself you are better than this brother but i hope you got paid i hope they paid you mad amounts of money because this is garbaggio man really really it's like doing a flipping capsule collections of suits with flipping reebok like reebok's flipping what like smart casual activation project thing and they tap you up to do some flipping double-breasted jackets with flipping buttons with a reebok motif on it or something like really not all good money is good money but hey in this case i hope you did get the p because these shoes are gash it's versatile big sucker for a good corduroy as well to me, Laura Piana is very like the Amalfi Coast. Yeah, just driving like big <laughs> the Amalfi Coast while he slots in. What's that? Is that um? Is that uh? I think I've got that book here. Is that Robert Green? There might be a Robert Green book here. I think. I think there might be a, like Master Mastery or something, or something along that kind of lines. <laughs> it's like niggas talking about the Amalfi Coast and the flattened Shoreditch. You know, like hilarious vintage cars, little coffees, and then. It embodies that lifestyle of 
understated. Does he get, he gets run over in the middle of the street while filming this. Elegance. It's like you can't be a good pair of shoes. Absolute trash. I don't know how much Laura Piana paid for that, but congratulations regardless, isn't it? If you want to purchase a pair, what's the details on it? So I don't look like I'm just out here scathing the shoes for no point. Has it got any shopping details on it? Um, shop the Laura Piana now on the website. It's available. If you want to Google it, Google it. I'm not going to waste any more time on it because those shoes are absolutely gosh.